Hi Beat City Church, we are so glad you welcomed us into your homes. Why don't we get our hearts ready to worship our King? If you are able, do stand up and get our bodies submitted to our spirit. Good morning Beat City Church, a warm welcome to our worship experience. Let's give him our best praise this morning. in the middle. 
voices in gratitude, Lord. We lift our voices and declare in the midst of our storm that we will praise you, God, because you are good and you are faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, God.
Hope you've enjoyed the worship with our worship team and why don't we continue to worship our king with our tithes and offerings for those of you who need our bank details check it out at the bottom of the screen we will keep the information up for 20 seconds which will help you write it down pastor Jess will lead us in communion at this time before we listen to the word let's also enjoy a time of communion together i hope that you have your bread and your juice ready so that we can share in this act together on this special day. In 1 Corinthians 11 verse 26 in the NIV version it says this, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Today on this occasion marked for remembering the resurrection of Jesus, I think there is no better time to proclaim what Jesus has done for us, to stand together though we are far from each other and to share in this time of remembering the joy and hope that unites us all. Jesus came so that we could have an eternal relationship with a holy God and it was our sins that stood in the way. But we praise God because he made a way to remove those sins. First, let's examine our hearts and repent for the things we have thought and done that are not pleasing to God. Let's examine our hearts and confess our sins, knowing that God is faithful and just to forgive us. Matthew 26 in the NIV says this in verse 26. It says this, while they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Let's eat this bread together and remember the precious sacrifice that was Jesus, his body torn and broken for our sins. God choosing to give us the best he could to rescue us, his only son to bear our sins and to wash us as white as snow. Let's eat the bread and thank God for what he gave us. Matthew 26 verses 27 to 28 in the NIV says this, Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let's drink this cup together and remember what it signifies. A new covenant has been made, a promise God says he will never break, a promise he made with his own blood, that those who believe will have eternal life and eternal communion with God. Let's rejoice and truly find joy in this gift like no other, that God would send his son to us who are sinners to give us such a promise. Let's drink the cup together.
Let's take this time and pray together. Father God, I just thank you so much for the joy that all of us have, Lord, not just today, but every day because of what you did on the cross through Jesus and because we can behold the face of our risen Saviour, Lord. I thank you, Father. I thank you that we can rejoice that Jesus is alive, Lord. He is alive in this world and he is alive in our hearts today, Lord. He is alive in our lives today, Lord. We thank you, Father. Lord, I pray that this joy will be a joy and strength that remains with us each and every day, Father. That this will be our foundation of hope, Lord. Our foundation of hope that we know, Father, what you have done and finished for us on the cross, Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you that we can come together as a church and remember this today, Lord. And this joy, Lord, will pervade our lives, Lord, and we will be able to spread it as a light to those around us, Lord. We thank you, and, you, and we praise you, Lord, and we ask you all these things in Jesus' mighty and precious name. I want to introduce a dear friend of mine, Pastor Albert Isaac. In the midst of this pandemic, God had brought a wonderful man into our midst to encourage us, encourage Jess and I. In getting to know Pastor Albert through our conversations, I know that we will be blessed to hear what he has to say to each and every one of you. I hope that he can be with us in person one day. Now, why don't we welcome Pastor Albert? Hello, Beach City Church. I'm so honored to be able to uh, minister to you today on the Word of God. I'm just so excited to be uh, asked uh, by your pastors, uh, uh, Josh and Jess, to bring you the Word of God today. And my prayer is that you will receive a very special blessing from God today as I share God's Word with you. I, I want to just say this before I begin, that um, you have uh, two amazing pastors. Uh, Pastor Josh and Jess are amazing uh, uh, servants of God. They are amazing uh, shepherds, and you are blessed. You are blessed to have such amazing leaders above you, uh, leading you forward. And I, and I really believe uh, in my time of interaction with your pastors, I, I hear their heart for Beach City Church, and I hear their heart uh, to take you to higher places uh, with them. And I know that if you would just um, catch their hearts and go along with them, you're going to see greater days ahead of you, and you're going to climb up to higher levels with them. So hang in there, stand with your pastors, believe with them, trust God with them. Good days are ahead of you, Beach City Church. So are you ready for the Word of God today? Well, today I want to talk to you about the blessing. First and foremost, I want you to know today that God's desire is always to bless you. It is always to bless His people. God always wants to bless you. So don't ever let anybody tell you that, it, that, that God's holding back something good from you because God has always wanted to give you His best. It has his, been His desire to give you the very best and nothing but the best. So always have that in your heart, that God is not holding back from you. God is not uh, wanting you to have lesser than the best. And the second thing to remember is that uh, if you go to the Baker's Dictionary of Applied Theology, the word blessing simply means this. It means endowed power that will result in prosperity and good success. Endowed power that will result in prosperity and good success. So it's just like me putting on this uh, jacket today. I'm endowed with this jacket, so whenever I put this on, this jacket is over me. So the same way, the blessing of the Lord is over you. It's over you. But you've got to choose. You've got to choose to live under the blessing of God. Because God is not holding back anything from you, but the way for you to, to have the blessing of God in your life is to live a life that is in, uh, that's in obedience to the plan and purpose of God for you, to what He has in store for you, and uh, to stand on His word and uh, believe that He has only the best prepared for you. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow to it. So every time that you talk about the blessing or we talk about the blessing, it is meant to increase you, to take you to a higher place in God. And today I want to talk about an aspect of the blessing which is thanksgiving. If you want to see blessing in your life, 
thanksgiving is the key to it. Having a lifestyle of thanksgiving. You see, if you want to see and experience God's blessing in your life, you must embrace an attitude of deliberate thankfulness in your life. If you, if you catch this today, you are going to position yourself to receive only the best that God has for you. And this involves glorifying God, even when we do not physically see what we believe. We have a strong example of this uh, as we look at the life of Abraham in the Bible who, who refused uh, to believe anything that contradicted the Word of God. Because of his faith, Abraham was mightily blessed. He was mightily blessed. We have another example uh, in, in, in even the life of Jesus himself when uh, this young boy brought five loaves and two fish to him. And there were 5,000 people that were very hungry that day. The Bible says that before Jesus performed the miracle of, 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 of uh, feeding the 5,000, the first thing that he did was he gave thanks to God. Now that is the key today. If you understand uh, this principle, you will see blessings flow in your life today. It comes as a result of thankfulness. Jesus thanked his heavenly Father. You see, we are accustomed to hearing uh, the world's murmuring and complaining, but proactively thanking and praising God in advance will actually activate increase in your life. It will activate increase in your life. So the first thing that I want to share with you today is this. An attitude of gratitude pleases God and brings blessing. You see, if thankfulness and giving glory to God opens the door to unlimited prosperity in every area of our lives. You see, we must give thanks even when we do not see it happening. When we do not see the things that we are expecting for, we still give thanks. I've learned in my own personal life that everything that I'm believing God for, I thank Him. I thank Him. I thank Him. Even though I don't see it yet, I keep thanking Him. And I keep thanking Him. And you know what? What I'm doing is I'm putting on the garment of the blessing. God's endowed power that will result in prosperity and good success. So when I, when I, when I keep thanking Him, I'm putting on my garment of blessing. I'm putting on God's empowerment over my life for prosperity and good success. And the, the thing is this, if I keep doing that, I am positioning myself in a place to constantly receive from God, to receive His best for me and for my future. And let me read to you in the book of Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7. It says here, Let the people praise you, O God, and then the earth will yield her increase. And God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear him. So we must not just wait until uh, God brings the increase before we thank him. I don't know about you, but most people uh, growing up, especially, you know, when we have little children, I'm a grandfather today, uh, and uh, um, when, when we train our little children, what do we do? When, when someone gives them something, when someone gives them a gift, or blesses them, we train them to say, say thank you, say thank you, say thank you to uncle, say thank you to mama, say thank you to daddy, say thank you to grandpa, grandma. We, we, we train our children to do that, and we ourselves, as, uh, as adults, we say thank you, we appreciate that. And so uh, the Bible tells us that with God, it's not just saying thank you after we receive it, but it's thank you in advance. Thanking God in advance positions you to receive His blessing. It positions you to stand under an open heaven and to receive all that God has for you. It does mean that regardless of whatever befalls us, we must find something for which we can be thankful for in the midst of our situation. You know, during this time of the uh, global pandemic that we are in, let me ask you a question. What can you be thankful for? What are you thankful for? Or are you just going through the motions and just saying, okay, I, I wish God that, that, that you know, this pandemic will be over. And I'm sure that that's all something that we all want. We all want to 
have this pandemic over and done with. And uh, we want to move forward. We want to we want to get closer to uh, to the end of this pandemic. But the truth is this: in the midst of this pandemic, God is doing amazing things. God is performing miracles. God is doing things that that's uh, 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 adding value to your life. And for those, we need to be aware of it. We need to be aware that God is doing these amazing things for us. And we need to be thankful. Be thankful. And thank Him in advance for what we see and we are believing God for Him to do for us. Whatever it is that you're trusting God for today, it doesn't matter how big it is or however small it is. Thank Him right now. The second thing I want to share with you today is that when we take time to reflect, we can always find something to be thankful for. In the book of John, chapter 11, and verse 41 to 43, the Bible says they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me, and I know you always hear me. For I said it because of the people, that they may believe that you have sent me. And after he spoke that, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible tells us that Lazarus rose from the dead, and he came out of that grave. And the people saw a mighty miracle. But what was it that preceded that? Jesus said, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. That's what preceded the miracle of Lazarus rising from the dead. What is the miracle that you are believing for today? Reflect, reflect, take time to reflect today. And find the things around you that you can be thankful for. It's, it's training yourself to be thankful. It's training yourself to be thankful for what you have. The food that's before you. The home that you, that you stay in, that you live in. The clothes that you wear. The health that you have. The, the spouse that you have. Your wife, your husband, your children, your loved ones. The finances that God has given to you. Thankful. Be thankful for these things because these things come from God. God is the one who's given it to you. Would you take time to thank God for these precious things in your life? We can be thankful to God for keeping His promises because we dwell in the secret place of the Most High according to Psalm 91. We can thank God that no matter uh, what it looks like, we are protected because we dwell in that place of safety, according to Psalm 91. Prayer and thanksgiving can turn the heart of the king towards God, according to Proverbs 21, verse 1. And we can be thankful to God for keeping his promises to us concerning healing and eternal life. We, we have so much to be thankful to God for today. We do not need to limit ourselves to just thanking Him for our past, we must also thank God for our bright future. We have the power to call things that are not as though it were, according to Romans chapter 4 and verse 17, that your words have the power to call the things that are not as though they were. So you're declaring into the future that this is what's going to happen in your life. So when you thank God, these things come into operation. So give thanks to God not just for the big things, but also for the little things, for the small things. When we thank God, regardless of our circumstances, He brings us out of our pit. He puts our feet on solid ground. So I want to encourage you today to take time to reflect because we can always find something to be thankful for. Because our help the Bible says in Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2, Our help comes from the Lord, on whom we must 
focus our attention on. You know, when we praise Him for what we consider the little things in our lives, we realize that in God's eyes, there are no insignificant little things. Because everything is important. Everything that He's given to us, it adds on to build us up, to make us the, the people, the person that He wants us to be. So we can thank God for using us wherever we are. Thank Him for the fact that He's using you right now to be a blessing to the poor, to the destitute, to the unloved, to the uncared for. We must not allow shame to stop us from being all that He has called us to be. And be thankful for that. Be thankful for that. Because God has so much in store for you. God has so much in store for you. I can, I can remember over and over again uh, in the years gone past that whenever I was trusting God for something, I would thank Him first. Whenever I'm, I was believing for something, I would thank Him. I would thank Him. I would thank Him. I would thank Him in advance and I would declare that that which I'm believing for is already on its way. See, richness in, in God's perspective is not only about dollars and cents because God wants to see you whole, spirit, soul, and body. He wants to see you complete in every area of your life. And so true prosperity is not just money, but it is also about every aspect of your life, every facet of your life. And so if you want to see the blessing of God in your life, Start being thankful. Because as you are thankful, good things will start to happen to you. Amazing things will start to happen to you. God will begin to open the doors of favor to you. God will open the doors of opportunity to you. And He will bless you. I remember the time uh, when I was, my wife and I were, were believing God for a home many years ago. Uh, and... Um, you know, we, we didn't have the resources for uh, buying this home. Uh, and at that time, we were just believing. We were just dreaming. And, and every time that we prayed, we thanked God in advance. Lord, we thank you for the home that you are preparing for us. We thank you that you're giving us this home. We don't even know which, is, which that home is. But we just know that we're going to have this house. Uh, and uh, that the days of us renting would end and we would own one day. And we kept on thanking God in our prayer time. We kept believing God and believing God and believing God. You know, the amazing thing was this. Um, one day, uh, I saw an ad about a house that was for rent. And so I, I went there with my wife. Uh, and uh, my mother-in-law was with us. And she, she said, let me come along. I want to see uh, this home uh, that you're going to see. And so we went. When we, when we arrived at this home, we... We saw this house. The moment we walked in, we just fell in love with it. Uh, and the amazing thing was that this house was not only for rent, but it was also for sale. Uh, it was either or. And uh, when we walked into it, we just, we just loved it. We thought this house is just perfect for our family. But the truth was this. We didn't have the finances for the down payment. We didn't even qualify for financing from the bank. But I remember... On that day, as, as we were walking out from the house, after seeing it with the agent, walking out, uh, my mother-in-law whispered to my wife and said, you should buy this house. You should buy this house. And but my wife said to her, Mom, uh, we can't because we don't have the resources for it. Uh, uh, we, know we don't have the down payment to buy this house. And she whispered to my wife and said, I will help you. I will give you the down payment for it. Go buy this house. Tell the agent that you want to buy this house. And so my wife, after talking to me about it, uh, you know, and I spoke to my mother-in-law, and, uh, and I said to her, Mom, I don't know when I can pay you back, but she said, don't worry about it. Go and get this house because this is a good house. And so we made an offer on that house, and uh, yes, we paid the down payment, but listen, I still needed to get the loan from the bank. And I didn't have the resources, neither Neither did I have uh, 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 the credit on, or, or the, um, uh, I was not qualified to receive the financing. 
I can still remember I went down to the bank one day and uh, just in faith and uh, walked into the uh, office of the, the, the bank, the, the general office, and I asked if I may meet with the manager of the bank. And uh, the staff at the counter said, what do you want to see him for? I said, I want to make an application for a loan. And so uh, they ushered me to his office. I sat down. I can still remember sitting down in front of this uh, manager's table. And there was a, a Bible on his table. And the moment I saw that Bible, I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. This, this uh, manager must be a Christian. So that's one obstacle over for me. And uh, when the manager walked in, now, mind you, I have never been to this bank before. I don't even know this manager. I don't even have an account in that bank. And this manager walks in, and the first thing he said to me is, Hello, Pastor. And I was like, I don't know who he was. I never met him in my life. And, and then he, of course, be, went on to tell me that, Oh, you know, he was in a meeting that I was preaching at, and he heard the message. And he remembered the whole message, even, if, even though I didn't remember the message that I preached. But he remembered it, and he, he said, uh, how can I help you, Pastor? And I said, I, I want to I apply for a loan. Uh, I want to buy this house. Uh, and I gave him the information about the house and all the uh, relevant documents. Uh, now, he said to me, okay, let's fill up the forms. And when he brought up the forms and uh, started filling up my information, uh, uh, he, I said, uh, 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 that's all I have. I have an ID card. I don't have any tax returns. I don't have bank statements. I really didn't have anything at that moment. And how many of you know that's not how you apply for a loan at the bank? You need to have relevant documents for you to, uh, you know, uh, uh, get the bank to lend you money. But I can still remember that day when he said to me, he said, Pastor, uh, in the natural, this is not possible. I said, I know. I said, but would you please still Submit my application for me. He said, I will, I will do as you say. And so the only part of the whole form that was filled up was information about the house, the property, and my personal information that was found on my identification card. Nothing more than that. No tax returns, no bank statements, no proof that I was worthy to receive this financing. I sent it in. Submitted it, went home, and kept thanking God. Thanking God. Before I went to the bank, I was thanking God with my wife. When I came back, I was thanking God with my wife. No answer yet. And it was, it was going to be nothing short of a miracle for me to even receive uh, this uh, financing from the bank. But here I was, trusting God, believing God. What was I doing? I was putting on the garment of the blessing of God and I was, I was thanking him in advance that he was going to provide for me. A couple of days later, I got a call from the bank and I was asked to come in. And I walked into the bank with, with, with a lot of uh, anxiety really, wondering what the response would be, even though I've been thanking God for it. When I got into his office, the manager came in and he said to me, Pastor, who do you know in my bank? Who do you know up there in my head office? I said, I'm so sorry, but I don't know anybody. I've never banked with your bank before. I, I don't know anybody. I just walked into this bank because I felt led to come into this bank. And then he said, I want you to know that something has happened. It's a miracle. And he showed me the document that my loan was approved. It was approved at the lowest interest rate possible. And uh, at, at the, at the, at the uh, loan tenure that I requested, all according to what I had believed God for, and even more because the, the, the interest rate was at the lowest. And I, I just shouted to God in thanksgiving that day in his office because I knew this was not natural. This was supernatural. It was God's super on my natural that produced the supernatural. God did it for me. And I want you to know that that house was the stepping stone for me to have the home that I have today. But what I want to say is this. It began with an act of thanksgiving. And I want you to know, my dear friends, you can have that happen for you as well. In whatever area of your life today, 
you can see the blessing of God take place in your life. So today, thank God. Thank Him in advance and see the blessing of God activate in your situation, in your life, in your family, in your job, in your business, whatever area that you are trusting God for, God can do it for you. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for everyone watching this service today. I want to thank you, Lord, that your plan is always to bless your people. And your desire is always to give them the best and nothing less. And so today I pray for everyone watching. And I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would begin to stir within their hearts for a spirit of thankfulness, of gratefulness to arise, and that they may be thankful, grateful, and always aware of what you are doing in their lives, that they will always be thankful for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do. I thank you, Father, that your blessing is coming upon your people right now. Even as they begin to cultivate a heart of thankfulness, your blessing is coming upon them. And, we, and they are going to see the manifestation of it in their lives. I give you thanks and I give you praise. And I declare in Jesus' name that every one of your people watching this today, they're going to receive their breakthrough. They're going to receive all that they are believing you for in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. I want to also uh, pray for those of you who are watching this today and perhaps you have never opened your heart to Jesus Christ. And today is your opportunity to come to know Him. The God I'm talking about, the God who wants to bless you, He wants to give you the greatest gift of all. And that is the gift of forgiveness of all of your sins and eternal life. So I want to encourage you today to join with me. If you desire to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, say this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today I open my heart to you. Be my Lord, be my Savior, and be my God. I thank you that my sins are forgiven, my past is forgotten, in Jesus' name. If you said that prayer today, I want you to connect with Beach City Church. And there are people over there, pastors and the team, who are going to help you in your new journey of knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I want to congratulate you for making the best decision in your life, accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So God bless you today, and I want to thank your pastors for this privilege. Thank you so much, Pastor Josh and Jess, for the privilege of bringing God's word to all of you today. And my prayer is that God will bless every one of you and God will bless Beach City Church and every single one of you is going to encounter the blessing of God like never before. God bless you. We hope you've enjoyed the service. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We look forward to seeing you either online or in person soon. Have a wonderful day. God bless.